What's up, apes? Welcome back to the 5 Minute Appeal. Today, we are going to be talking about housing. Or more specifically, we're going to be talking about the distinct lack of housing that's currently available in the US. And we are going to be doing so through the lens of the single largest culprit in creating that problem for idiots like you and me that are dumb enough to try to buy a house in the US in 2024. D.R. Horton, they are the single largest home builder in the US. They just dropped an earnings report here this morning, and we need to talk about it. So make sure to stay tuned to the very end so that you can hear our banana rating, get the official WSO certification of if this is something that should be on your radar or if you should stay as far away as you humanly possible. We know how this goes already, so let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to pull up and share my trusty little Word document. Or actually, there is no longer a trusty Word document. Now we have a trusty PDF file. We've essentially decided to put on our big boy pants here and that maybe we should put some actual professionalism into some of these reports instead of the piece of shits that I was going off of beforehand. A lot of you guys in the comments on social media as well have been requesting that we make these reports available. So we took that and we thought that's a great idea. Definitely want to share more content with the wisest apes available. So we are going to be publishing these reports going forward on the WSO Alpha portion of Wall Street Oasis. If you're not signed up for WSO Alpha already, I have no fucking idea what else you could be spending your money on. Definitely going to be better spent with Alpha and staying tuned with all of our rampant speculation like you're going to see here today. So if you want access to these reports, make sure to go ahead and check that out. We should have this and all the historical ones uploaded there by the end of this week. All right. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about DR Horton. Uh, America's builder, they like to call themselves, but we're going to call them America's gatekeeper. Because being the largest home builder in the U.S., they haven't done much building over the past decade or so. And that's largely what's leading to this chronic undersupply and shortage of housing that's elevating prices beyond what they otherwise would be. So very similar to how OPEC or OPEC Plus maintains high oil prices by simply cutting production, ensuring that demand outpaces supply and that you get a constant price rise. That's what these home builders tried to do with housing here in the US. Basically, they're only going to build enough houses to make sure that they can maintain a certain price point and milk as much margin out of these things as possible. Clearly, it has worked out for that, however. So we can't really be too mad shares are currently trading well the company's trading at about a 50 billion dollar valuation especially after today it's probably over 50 given the positive reaction by markets now that market cap has grown by about 46 and a half percent over the past year or so clearly whatever strategy they're going with is working out and it also led to outperformance on revenue in the latest quarter so it came in at about 9.11 billion uh that's a very healthy growth from a year ago just under about 18 percent and just over 14 percent on a quarterly basis as well very strong performance given seasonal factors generally the first quarter or to dr horton the second quarter some of us, I guess, struggle with reading a calendar, but typically the first quarter of the year is very weak seasonally for home builders in the U.S., seeing this kind of a growth on a quarterly basis, very strong sign for the company. What wasn't a great sign, however, was this decline in operating margin. So this has been on kind of a steady downtrend. It's not necessarily in the territory where we really start to get concerned, but definitely still following, falling from the peaks in the post-COVID environment. Company, it's returning to somewhat of a normalization. So... This isn't something, and neither is the decline in net margin that immediately makes this thing's DOA as an investment opportunity, but it's definitely something that's going to be a little bit of a red flag on our radar. Net income did beat expectations, however, at about $1.183 billion for the quarter, much better than analysts were expecting. However, free cash flow does remain in negative territory. You know, somebody way smarter than me once said that uh, income is like food, whereas cash flow is like oxygen to a company. You know, human beings, we can go about three weeks without food. Companies can definitely go a long time without food just to ask, or <laughs> without food, without income. Just ask Amazon, or even better yet, go check out our video on Reddit to see how that absolute piece of shit profitless company has done over the past multiple decades in terms of not making a single dollar whereas free cash flow is much more like oxygen we can only go about three minutes without that so extended periods with negative free cash flow is going to be very ugly for these kinds of companies but for a company like dr horton it has a very long runway just given its asset base and given how healthy the balance sheet looks now let's get into the valuation piece forward price to earnings. This has been, uh, you know, not necessarily volatile. It's been relatively stable over the past couple of years, despite all the changes in the housing market, currently trading at 10.1x for the next 12 months worth of earnings. Return on assets. This is an incredibly important metric for a company like this that's uh, very asset heavy because its inventory is made up of home. So, very asset heavy business model. We want to see quick asset turnover and quick return on assets. Seeing this decline, definitely not a good sign. And it's even worse when we factor in the fact that asset turnover just fell below one for the period at about 0.9x. 
That means that they're not making enough off of these assets that they're uh, basically, they're not doing a good enough job turning these assets into revenue and they're not able to keep that pace. So, you know, returning to these uh, previous levels shouldn't be too difficult because once again, they do have kind of complete control over what the prices are going to be for the assets that they sell. But this still, it, it's once again, another red flag to be on the lookout for. So not necessarily a DOA kind of thing, but uh, definitely a worrying sign. Return on equity as well has been following a similar trend down to about 16.36% right now. All right, taking a look at what they actually reported today. Uh, very wide beat on both sales and EPS. EPS came in about 14.29% higher than expectations, whereas sales came in about 10.19% higher than expectations. Both very healthy beats right there. The primary driver for the sales beat was actually not the total volume of orders, but once again, that price. So this is basically saying that net sales, the number of orders fulfilled, the volume grew by about 14%, whereas the value of that volume grew by about 17% on average basically saying that home price increases are contributing much more to revenue growth than actual increases in volume. Now, this led to improved gross margins as well, because although they're not necessarily selling a shit ton more, they are selling so at a shit ton higher prices. So that's obviously going to pad margins a little bit, gets us a little bit concerned on the operating expense side of things. But, you know, we did see net income growth the stellar pacing that of revenue growth. So once again, can't be that bad of a sign. Taking a look at those numbers and some of these trends in context with the overall housing market, we can see that home prices in the U.S. have increased by about 4.8%, according to Redfin data. Meanwhile, DR Horton's home prices have increased by about 4.4% over the past year or so. That might seem worrying that their home prices are growing slower than the overall market itself. But keep in mind, we are talking about averages, very high priced homes. These are going to pull up the average price increases quite a bit. DR Horton being such a large player, they have their hands in every different kind of market. And a, much of the United States home sales are done below the two or $300,000 price point, believe it or not. So DR Horton is very involved in those markets, although they do go up to about the million to a million and a half dollar range. It's these custom regional home builders that are going to be experiencing those very high priced homes and that's going to be pulling up the average increase so again not a hugely concerning factor but definitely not ideal either it's also not ideal is the rising mortgage rates over the past year rising mortgage rates is going to destroy demand for new homes but it's an interesting position to be in because typically when interest rates fall, home prices or really any asset that's linked to that interest rate are going to increase. But the current state of the U.S. housing market is so fucked that declines in interest rates are going to lead to declines in mortgages. And that might get some of these old boomers that have been hoarding all the housing supply from us young people to actually decide, you know what, maybe my kids and grandkids do need a place to live because now I can go ahead and move into a smaller house and I'm not going to get fucked over on a 7.5% mortgage rate. These are the people that have mortgages in the range of about 2 to 4%. I don't think they're necessarily looking to double or triple that mortgage rate into their retirement. So we can't necessarily blame them, but we might actually see a dynamic where declines in home declines in interest rates actually lead to declines in home prices. Now, new home sales did increase by about 5.9% uh, in February of this year. That's the most recent data. This is, uh, you know, it's not as bad as S&P CoreLogic, who's tracking prices back in the 1990s right now. But very healthy to see new home sales increase. And we're talking about new home sales because that's what DR Horton built. Nobody built an existing home because it's already fucking existing. But they do have a remodeling business. It's a very small segment of revenue. So we basically ignored it for today. New single family home inventory has improved over the last year as well. Currently sitting at about 8.4 months of supply versus the 8.2% that was or 8.2 months of supply that was available in spring of last year. So starting to see some improvements on that front, but let's see what that's going to mean for the rest of this fiscal year. Basically expecting revenue growth of about 4.9%, relatively healthy given market conditions. That put a smile on Mr. Market's face today and led largely to the share price appreciation that they're seeing, plus their increase in guidance for the total number of home closures they expect. So they had previously been expecting to close deals on about 87 to 90,000 total homes for the year. Now they're saying it's going to be a little bit more at about 89 to 91. Fantastic sign, especially if they're done at these elevated prices. That should bode well for even much higher revenue growth than this 4.9%. Quite honestly, it seems relatively conservative. They're setting a low bar for themselves so that when they beat that, they can get outside share price appreciation. Cash flows from home building operations are expected to be about $3 billion, which will be down from the last year. But once again, coming off of the post-pandemic uh, kind of craziness that was still somewhat lingering at the beginning of 2023, this isn't too much of a surprise. We do expect about $1.6 in total share repurchases. That's, what, about 5% of the company's float overall, so relatively healthy in terms of share repurchases, giving money back to shareholders in that way. 
So basically, what are we thinking so far? Market reacted very well to the company's earnings. The stock was up about 3% the last time I looked here today. They are the largest home builder in the US, but our question is, could that home price boom be over? Probably not, just because of demographic trends. So really what matters in homes is going to be the, the growth of population that's coming into their home buying years. We have the millennials, which is the single largest generation in U.S. history and the largest in terms of total population right now. We have Gen Z, which is a very large generation as well, but it's more on par with something like Gen X and the baby boomers like millennials are. Uh, so falling rates, these typically are going to lead to higher home prices. But like we talked about, there's other things to consider right now because we're in a bit of a bad news is good news environment still. So the macro environment is still a little bit backwards given the impacts from COVID and given the bazooka of $6 trillion that Jay Powell and the rest of those gray-haired politicians dumped on the economy for us young people to deal with decades down the line. Now, speaking of those demographic trends, however, this is kind of what we're looking at. So in the overall U.S. population, we can see that millennials make up about 21% of us and Gen Z makes up about 20, a little bit less than 21%. Now, when we look at the housing market, however, Gen Z makes up about 3% of buyers and 2% of home sellers. So there's a very wide uh, difference or a very wide spread there that Gen Z is going to want to fill. That's a, an enormous amount of individuals coming into their home buying years. Very similar for younger millennials who currently make up about 17% of the housing market, but they have a little bit of a spread to close as well here. So expect that to get changed and shout out to the greatest generation just because they're on the screen. Appreciate you guys fighting World War II if any of you happen to be watching this. So huge demographic booms coming in. Let's see how DR Horton's uh, kind of more basic financial financials have been handling that over the past couple of years. We can see the gross margin trends. You know, they improved dramatically in the immediate post-COVID environment, but like a lot of the other stuff going on with DR Horton and the other home builders, it is definitely normalizing to pre-pandemic levels. And when we take a look at the company's valuation and kind of compare it to the industry, we can see that DR Horton is just on the underside, just below the average valuation right here at about 7.9x in terms of EV to EBITDA. Being the largest home player, home builder in the entire country, we kind of expect that. Generally, you're not going to get a premium when you're at that level and especially when you're compared to building suppliers like bldr which we currently hold in the alpha portfolio so that's really going to be the things to consider going forward here is how you want to play this demographic boom in the u.s housing market a couple of ways to do so would be through commodity prices now we're also tracking this because this is one of the largest costs for companies like dr horton we can see that this massive decline in the uh, price of lumber over the past couple of years definitely going to be beneficial on the net income side of things. Luckily, during this absolute explosion, this was driven by, you know, higher demand for homes. So D.O. Horton, they didn't necessarily suffer all too, too much, uh, but it certainly was wild outperformance from what many would have expected. So that's obviously going to pad margins going forward if that decline stays relevant or if that if it stays declined and doesn't get too fucked by cyclical factors now the big thing that we want to consider is the concentration of the residential construction market we can see here that it is much more in the fragmented territory than it is in consolidated but this is one of those markets that experiencing quite a lot of consolidation right now Dear Orton being the largest home builder in the United States, I'll say it once again, they are going to be much more on the acquisitive side of things. I don't know about you guys, generally when companies are going to be making a bunch of acquisitions and you already don't have a very high asset turnover rate, that gets me very nervous. I wouldn't necessarily want to be invested in a company that's leading those acquisitions, so that kind of gets us into our summary of our thoughts here at this point. So the housing market, probably the most obvious long-term bull market in the investment universe right now. Demographic waves, you d don't fight demography. I mean, the, the old saying is don't fight the Fed, but don't fight demography either. We have massive underlying secular demand for housing because nobody really wants to be homeless, although maybe Gen Z could turn that into one of their cool, edgy trends. Uh, but this is a very obvious bull market. So the real question is, what's the best way to play that bull market? Dior Horton most likely will benefit from that as long as they don't completely fuck up, but I personally think that you're better off with picks and shovels players. That's why we hold names like Builders First Source and Airbnb in the WSO Alpha portfolio, but we don't hold names like Dior Horton or these home builders that are actually exposed to home prices. We don't want to be exposed to the underlying quote-unquote commodity price. Houses are definitely not a commodity, but we don't want to have exposure to that, uh, that kind of a key risk. Uh, they do, you know, a lot of these picks and shovels plays, they obviously have good exposure to uh, U.S. housing markets. So, you know, that's kind of why we prefer it in that territory. Speaking of exposure, however, DR Horton, they do have some good exposure in the United States' most important markets, being the Northeast, the Southeast, and Southern California. This is where you're getting very high ticket home prices or uh, high degrees of population influx, which is 
further increases in haul prices to come down the line. So that's a very positive sign for DR Horton as well. Falling rates, like we said, could be more of a risk. Home builders are experiencing a high degree of market consolidation. Like we said, we expect them to be an acquisitive player over the next couple of years. Risk to own in this case. Personally, I would rather own the I would rather own the acquire ease. I would much rather be invested in a small regional custom home builder that a name like DR Horton could benefit from because of the outsized exposure to higher ticket home prices. So that seems like the much better way to play it. But before we make any decisions, uh, we're definitely going to want to be on the lookout for the cost of materials, things like lumber going forward. And that could dent margins and make this stock actually underperform the rest of the housing market uh, or the rest of, you know, kind of other picks and shovels players in the industry. Because if we see a spike in things like lumber again that's only going to benefit players like builders for source that sell supplies and materials for housing rather than selling the houses themselves uh, home prices could fall on interest rates good news is this bad news really the interest rate question is going to be one of the main ones at least in the short to intermediate period uh following acquisitions announced on by by la large uh home builders we basically are we're going to want to be tracking any acquisitions that occur in the home building market right now. We don't necessarily expect DR Horton to be the first to start acquiring these homes. So if we start to see other players start to acquire other uh, home builders in the U.S., we're definitely going to be want to paying attention to what the multiple is uh, and all the other factors that are going on in that deal so that we can kind of assess what we can expect from DR Horton, how much they're going to overpay, how much dilution we shareholders can face. All right, so with all of that said here, what's going to be our rating, WSO's rating? On the edge of their seats, I'm sure. And, you know, if you're a regular watcher of WSO Alpha, you can probably predict this one already. We'll give it three out of five bananas. Definitely a solid investment if you're a boomer and you don't want to take any risk at all. But for my liking, this thing is just a little bit too safe. It's probably going to be a slow grower over the next couple of years, keeping very much in line with uh, the overall, like the S&P 500 and like the home building market. They're the leader in the industry. Like I said, I think you're way better off buying a picks and shovels player. That could be something like Builder's First Source, which we talked about. Could be something like an Airbnb, but expand your thoughts. It could be like a Redfin or a Zillow as well, which we do have a Zillow piece on the alpha page as well there. So definitely a good market that you're going to want to be paying attention to and getting your hands in on outside of just trying to buy a home. But do it in the best way possible. So don't necessarily just jump on this because they're the biggest one in the industry. Think about those picks and shovels player as well. Those are definitely going to see more home price appreciation. They typically have uh, a higher betas as well and will kind of outperform the rest of the industry. So that's at least what we expect so far. As always, do not listen to a word I say. Please don't take my advice or don't at least, at least don't put your life savings into anything that I say because I'm definitely not going to be responsible for that. I can barely manage my own money or really my own life on a day-to-day basis. -day basis so please do not listen to me this is not financial advice once again but of course apes thanks for tuning in like i said drop a comment down below letting us know which companies and which other events you want to see us cover next for now happy investing happy trading and we'll see you in the next one bye now